At the bottom of a 164-foot oil derrick in a Taranaki cow paddock near Kapuni, Mr. J.B. Price of a New Zealand oil combine explains spudding in to the crowd. Spudding in this new well means starting to drill, a big moment. It's cost a million pounds to get this far. Investigations have revealed a typical oil dome under here, so it's worth the risk to see if Taranaki is another Texas. The Minister of Mines, Mr. Hackett, commends the courage of investors as he prepares to start the venture officially. Oil drilling's a calculated gamble. Mr. Hackett starts the drill, and by the next day they're down 200 feet, lowering seven 30-foot drill pipes into the newly drilled bore. They've got two miles to go. Louis Parsons, an English oil driller, directs his gang in joining in another drill pipe. They're learning fast. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, work will go on, employing four gangs of men in three shifts. The burning question still is, will they strike oil? Part of the drive to develop New Zealand's export trade in meat was the invitation to a group of American experts to visit us and talk over some of the problems. Now, after long discussions with our meat producers, they take a last look at Wellington Wharves before leaving for home. Last year, 80,000 tonnes of our meat went to America, and a knowledge of the needs of the American housewife and the American supermarket may help increase this figure. From New Zealand's point of view, the talks have been successful, and Mr. Arberg of Chicago speaks for the visitors. We've been tremendously impressed with the beauty of the country and with the manner in which you produce the sheep and lambs and also in the manner in which you have developed your uh, pastures. I know of no country that is doing a better job in pasture improvement than here in New Zealand. But most of all, we appreciate uh, the fine hospitality and the wonderful people and the friendship that they have uh, uh, displayed here to us while uh, in our stay in New Zealand. HMS Albion of the Far East Fleet. Commissioned five years ago, she was the first aircraft carrier built with angled flight deck and mirror landing aid. Carries 45 planes, Seahawk jet fighters, Sea Venom all-weather jets, Douglas Sky Raiders and Whirlwind helicopters, which are now taking up Guardian Angel positions for Seahawks returning from maneuvers. Commanded by Captain Cole, DSC, Albion is on a goodwill tour of New Zealand and Australia. The first Seahawk approaches at 100 miles an hour. aid helps pilots sight their landings. One more, a radar equipped Sky Raider back from long range exercises. He's overshot. Out over the side, angle flight takes the answer. No more crashes in emergency nets with this landing system. Down, but he still had the power to keep airborne if he overshot again. There are landings and takeoffs every hour. Each group still maintains intense training while on tour. Albion, with her destroyer escort Cossack and two supply ships, are units of formidable task forces of the British Navy's Far East Fleet, which is based on Singapore and Hong Kong. Converging on Albion's course is the Royal Fleet Auxiliary, Reliant, the group's supply ship for stores and spare parts. She's also a target for line shooting. Reliant is the Navy's first store ship capable of replenishing aircraft carriers at sea. She carries everything from washers to a flight deck tractor. 
All the spare parts go below to the hangars and workshops where legions of engineers and technicians maintain the 10 million pound fighting ship. Radar mechanics, pastry cooks, even a liftman for the flight deck lift well, they all keep Albion's main armament in the air. Guardian Angels warm up their wings. It's time for another takeoff. Now the jets. the 100-foot hydraulic catapult. In one and a half seconds, you're doing over 100 miles an hour. It's like a kick in the back. Zealand coastline. Below, Albion. She is far from base, but in this jet age, not so far. Today, the defence of New Zealand and the Far East are closely linked. Albion steams on. Her 10-day visit to New Zealand nearly over.